In a recent video I reviewed a few plant-based alternatives to jerky and compared them to real jerky and the plant-based alternatives ranged from disappointing to just above mediocre. At the end of that video I mentioned I might have a go at making some plant-based alternatives to jerky myself and today we're going to have a go at that. So I think the objective today is not going to be to try to replicate the texture and taste of meat but rather to make something that stands on its own as an interesting and tasty beer snack. Now of course plant-based beer snacks already exist in the form of nuts and crisps but I want to create something that's got a bit of substance and chew to it. I'm going to do that with a range of different vegetables and some shiitake mushrooms. But first we're going to mix up the marinade. So first we've got a good grind of black pepper. There's probably about a tablespoon of ground black pepper there. About a level teaspoonful of smoked paprika. I don't want to go too heavy on the smoked flavour because this is not going to be cooked at all. This is just going to be dehydrated. I'm going to have a nice heaped teaspoonful of sweet paprika. A heaped teaspoonful of dried mixed herbs. This is thyme, marjoram, parsley, oregano, sage and basil. And I'm going to have some ground allspice, but not too much. So probably about half a teaspoonful. Now the wet ingredients. So I've got this chilli oil and this has got chilli flakes in it. This is the type that doesn't have fish sauce in it, obviously, because we're going for plant based here. So this is just chilies and salt and soybean oil and soy sauce. Now, of course, my vegetables don't have any natural fat in them or not very much. So I'm going to have a fair bit of this chilli oil because I do want there to be some moisture in the form of oil that will persist beyond dehydration. So I've got, I don't know, what was that, five teaspoons full of this chilli oil with some of the chilli flakes out of the bottom. Maple syrup. Now please don't judge on the quality of maple syrup that's available to me here in the UK. I use what I can get. It's probably not up to the standard that you can get in Canada. And also I've got this. This is blackberry balsamic vinegar. I made this kind of by accident. So this blackberry balsamic vinegar is a bit of a strange story really. I made this back in 2013 so that's over eight years ago when I actually laid this down. And my intention was to replicate the cheaper form of balsamic vinegar which is really just made from vinegar that's mixed with condensed grape juice and caramel to, to make a kind of condiment. The more expensive version of balsamic vinegar is made by aging that starting vinegar in barrels so that over time it condenses and changes character and becomes a much more complex and I think people would say probably more delicious product. But of course that takes time and you lose some in the process. And so the kind of proper version of balsamic vinegar is very expensive. So anyway, I made this back in 2013 out of blackberry syrup and vinegar and I completely forgot about it and put it away in the cupboard. and. What's actually happened is because this bottle has a cardboard insert missing from the lid, there's been a very slow evaporation process through this lid. And I think what I've actually done here is in some way replicated that barrel aging, obviously without the wood, but replicated that long aging process. And so whereas this was purple when I bottled it, it is now a brown colour and Let's just have a look at it. So it's a dark brown, still quite thin, but somewhat syrupy liquid. I'm just going to have a little taste. Yeah, it's really complex. It's sharp, but it's also sweet. It's got caramel notes, which I don't remember adding any caramel to this. And it's, uh, it's just got a really complex fruitiness to it that's really, really good. I wish I'd made more. So probably about half a tablespoonful of that. So let's just give that a mix up and see what it looks like. I do want this marinade to be fairly gloopy and adhesive. I don't want it to just drip off of the things I'm going to put it onto. Yeah, that looks pretty good to me. So we've got a kind of thin paste. There is going to be no cooking involved here, so I don't see any reason why I can't just taste that as it is. Mm, that's pretty good. It needs a bit of salt. There is salt in that chili oil and those chili flakes but it does need a little bit more. So I'm going to set that aside and that'll just sit for a moment anyway, which is good because those flavours will infuse into the liquids. And I'm going to go and prepare the vegetables. So the most laborious part of that process is probably going to be flame roasting this red pepper, which I'll go and do now. I've also got a jar of flame roasted peeled peppers here. So I'll be trying both the authentic flame roasting and the kind of cheats version. To flame roast the pepper, and I've done this before, I'm just going to put it on a carving fork 
and I've got my blowtorch here. This is a this is a blowtorch intended for plumbing, but it'll be just fine. So we'll just get that lit up. And I'm just going to burn the pepper all over the skin. So that just goes into a plastic bag and I'm going to leave it closed like that and the steam that comes out of it will help to loosen that burnt skin. Right, time to prep some of these vegetables. So I've got some nice big carrots. Followers of the channel will know I do like a girthy carrot. And I'm going to peel these just because the skins are a bit rough and I want the end product to be pleasant to eat. So I'm going to cut these up into chunks. And then the chunks I'm going to cut into kind of thickish slices because I want these to have a, a fair bit of chew to them. And bear in mind, these when these dry, they will shrivel down quite a bit. And I think, I don't know, I think maybe we'll just go for, yeah, some of the bigger pieces I think I'll just cut in half. And just so that we know what it's like, I'm also going to cut some rounds. I did do something like this once before where I tried to make fake pepperoni out of carrots and I ended up with something that wasn't pepperoni and wasn't anything approaching pepperoni but it was nice in its own right and looking back it might well have been a decent beer snack so we're kind of redoing that here but also with some other things and then these carrot pieces are going to go into a big bowl and it's going to have a good tablespoonful of that coating and then I just need to kind of I might need to add more of that I might need to make some more of it but I've got to kind of get that coating all of the pieces at the moment that's not going all that well on reflection what I think what might be good here is if I did this in a box and put the lid on and just gave it a good shake so yeah my marinating vessel is actually going to be this big jug because I can put the lid on give it a really good shake and that should get everything fairly evenly coated. I think we're going to need some more of this in there. Now I'm going to put a bit more maple syrup in again just to loosen it up. Okay that looks fairly well coated and I will reuse the bowl so that we don't actually waste any of this coating. It'll Whatever's stuck on the outside will go on the next vegetables to go in. So the next thing is going to be shiitake mushrooms and I know how much mushrooms shrink when they're dried so I'm not going to cut these really small I am just going to cut them all in half trying to preserve a bit of stalk on both halves so we can know what we're eating the smaller ones I will just leave completely as they are the slightly larger ones will get halved and so these pieces I'm just going to arrange in a single layer on my dehydrator. This is going to make a mess of the dehydrator. It's going to need some serious washing. Unlike when I do mushrooms where it just needs a wipe over really. This has got some sticky bits on it. It's all washable pieces. Important part here is not to obstruct that central vent there for the fan and also just to keep everything in a single layer so that nothing's stopping anything else from getting dehydrated. I think that's probably about as much as I can fit on this shelf. And the next phase is the mushrooms. Now, the mushrooms will shrink more than the carrots. And so, I'm going to put in a bit less of this marinade. Because as they shrink, that coating will get concentrated on the surface. And I don't want it to be too much. So again, just going to give that a shake around to try to distribute those coatings. Let's see how we did. Looks pretty good to me. The next thing might seem a bit weird, but I've got this half a butternut squash here. I roasted the thick bit and we had that for Sunday dinner. But here's my reasoning. This butternut squash has been cut and standing out for a few days and it has gone actually quite leathery. And I reckon that might have a good chew when it's dried. So I will lose the, the skin. And this going into the compost here is, I'm fairly sure, 
where my volunteer squash came from. Looking at those seeds, they're very similar sort of size and shape. So that's the seeds and stringy bits out of the way. And I think what we'll do, let's have a look. What do I want to cut these into? Little crescents, maybe? Something like that, perhaps. Yeah. I think it'll be good if I can make the pieces so that they're identifiable, so that at least when I'm tasting it, I can tell whether I'm eating a piece of carrot or a piece of butternut squash or a mushroom. So I'm going to keep the, the shape of the vegetables a little bit recognizable. And this is quite a hard vegetable, so this is going to go down near the bottom of the dehydrator, just above the carrots, I think. Now the red pepper. And we're going to start with the one that I fire roasted myself. Now that that's been sitting in the bag, the skin and all of this burnt bits just scrape off. Never so easy. But they leave behind a kind of smoky barbecue aroma. So this isn't just a peeled pepper. This is a pepper that's got some infused smokiness to it. I've had people say to me in the past, why don't you do that in the oven? The oven will tend to cook the pepper and it may well make the skin loosen up and it may even blacken the skin if you leave it in there long enough. But this is not the same thing as that. What we've got here is actually only very slightly cooked pepper. The flesh is still almost raw, just ever so slightly softened, but the skin is completely removed. And it's got this, as I say, it's got this smoky aroma that really only comes from high temperature toasting of the skin. I'm not gonna be 100% diligent with removing this skin because a little bit of it will just add a smokiness to the end result. And then this pepper, I'm just gonna lose the blossom end bit and the core. And I will just carefully trim out these little bits of pith here as well. I don't even know that they're that unpleasant to eat, but I'm gonna take them out anyway. Right, these I think I'm just gonna cut into pieces a bit like that. Leave them nice big strips because they will shrink down when they're dried. Hmm, I think we might need a bit more marinade on them. Okay, those go into the dehydrator now. Okay, now I've got the red and yellow peppers that I took out of the jar. I camera wasn't rolling for when I was cutting them all up. <laughs> but these have got quite a lot more seeds in them than, than my own fire roasted pepper, which I cleaned quite diligently. They're also quite a lot wetter. So what I've done with these is just before I put them in the jug, I take them across to the sink like this and give them a squeeze. And we do get some liquid out of them. But I think these might need a marinade that's tailored a bit to their specific moisture level. So given that I've actually run out of marinade now, I'm going to mix that straight into this jug. Let's just mix that together, and the shaking will do that. Right, shaky shake. I think that's pretty well coated. Let's get that into the dehydrator and then we're done. Okay, now I'm expecting these pepper pieces will shrink a little bit as they dry, and I don't want them to stick to the bars and then break. So I'm hoping to put them on there and give them a little bit of a twist to help to discourage them from sticking. I'm not sure how much I'm gonna succeed on that. Let's have a look, that's, yeah, that's it. So actually I have two more shelves here. I could make something else, but I haven't got anything else to put in there. So I'm gonna leave it at that. The lid goes on the other way around. I'm gonna run that on 55 degrees Celsius for probably six to eight hours. And away we go. Okay, so the dehydrator has been running for eight hours and it's finished its cycle and it looks like it's worked. Now, I don't mind running the dehydrator for extended periods in the winter, even though we don't heat the space where I'm using this. If I warm this space, we lose less heat from the house into this space. So it's kind of a dual benefit. I get dried vegetables or dried whatever. And the energy used from this partly comes off the domestic heating bill anyway. Let's have a look and see what we got. So these are the butternut squash pieces and they have dried, not crisp, they're kind of bendy, but that's good. That does hopefully mean they'll be chewy. So that's half a butternut squash in dried form. Next, the carrots. And again, these have dried to bendy pieces, but they are quite dry. Now some of the coating is kind of flaking off of these, 
but I think that's probably inevitable. Okay, so that was my, what, three big girthy carrots have condensed down into one little bowl. The mushrooms. The mushrooms have gone, yeah, again, leathery, which is good. The mushrooms are the ones that look the most like some sort of meat. And I don't suppose that's really surprising. So that was that uh, pack of shiitake mushrooms. has shrunk down quite a lot. Mushrooms do shrink a lot when they're dried. And then these are my red pepper pieces. These are the pieces of pepper that I fire roasted. So that's a whole red pepper right there. And then this is the jar of red pepper pieces. And these are quite a lot thinner because they were long peppers and they have a thinner sort of flesh, but they look like they might have worked. So a big cleanup required on the dehydrator and it's too early in the day for me to pour a beer, but you don't have to wait because we can cut straight to that. So here's the results of my endeavors, five different varieties of plant-based, well, plant and mushroom-based beer snacks. Now we've got to have a bit of a taste off and evaluate which of these is the best. It's a bit like the plant jerky Olympics. Now, one thing I will do before I start is I'm going to season these a little bit more. I was a little bit conservative on the salt while I was actually preparing these, and that was partly deliberate because it's very difficult to remove salt once you've added it. And I was concerned that when these things shrink right down, obviously that salt concentration would increase. However, I did have a sneaky little nibble of a couple of bits that were stuck to the dehydrator racks and they were under salted. So I'm just going to grind a little bit of finely ground salt on top of these and give them a little juggle. I'm going to be accompanying this with this Teisnacher 1543. This is day nine of my beer advent calendar. I think I'd better have a little taste of this slightly cloudy golden amber beer. Mm. Oh, that's nice. So where should we start? Well, I'm going to start with the butternut squash. So butternut squash is, it's really reduced down in thickness. If you look at those slices were four or five millimeters thick when I put them in the dehydrator, they're now down to about one and a half millimeters. Of course, that's to be expected. They're dehydrated. Anyway, they're kind of bendy. They're quite tough. I can't pull that apart. It's quite leathery. Let's give it a taste. got quite a chew to it not unlike the it's like a it's kind of like the texture of dried apple only more so quite leathery but with a, an interestingly crisp bite flavors good once you get through the seasoning layer there's a real sweetness to it inside and I can confirm that goes okay with beer okay next I think we'll do the carrot and we've got two different things to taste here because we've got transverse slices and longitudinal slices. So we'll do both because there might be a difference in texture. So the carrot, well, it, some pieces are snapping, other pieces are bendy. So I'll try a bit of both. It's quite a lot tougher. Even more of a chew to it than the butternut squash. And of course the earthy nuttiness of the carrot has come through. I'm just going to try it, one of the transverse slices. Mm. Actually that was more pleasant texture. That was nicer to eat than the lengthway slices. I'm just going to try another one just to make sure that wasn't a fluke. My hands are going to get progressively stained with the chili oil from these uh, plant jerkies here so don't worry about that. My hands are going to look filthy by the end of this. Definitely the transverse slices are more pleasant to eat than the longitudinal ones. They've got a super chew to them, but it's a bit too much. Mushrooms. Mushrooms, of course, are not plants. They are in a kingdom of their own. Anyway, so these have kind of got a bit of a snap to them. Very just different texture, kind of like, um, like crispy bacon almost, actually. Very good flavour. Flavour is definitely superior to those two. Yeah, I mean, obviously the mushroom flavour is there, but there is a kind of depth to it, more, more so than there is with these two. These two are kind of almost fruity, slightly earthy for the carrots. These are deeply savoury. Okay, and now we've got the two examples made from peppers. These are the peppers I sliced and dried myself. These are the ones from the jar. 
and these have gone really thin and I think that's just because they were long peppers so they were thinner flesh anyway this has gone quite chunky I think that was originally a yellow pepper oh hang on palette cleanser yeah that's quite nice good chew to it really kind of sugary chew to it actually almost like like uh, licorice or some sort of confectionery of that sort let's try one that we can identify as yeah that was a red pepper I don't think it's going to make a huge amount of difference mm, it does taste different these are really good a real depth of flavor to them sweetness underneath all of that and the chew is like like um, a really dense licorice these peppers did make the most mess in the dehydrator I think because they were so wet coming out of the jar as they shrank I think that just squeezed more more drips of moisture out of them I actually had to take the dehydrator apart to clean it okay and then finally this is my fire roasted peppers that I did myself mm, that's been better than that well now I've got to mull this over and come to some sort of decision about which of these are my favorite now there might be people concerned at this point that these don't contain the same sort of protein level as you would get from a meat-based jerky and that's true perhaps with the exception of the mushrooms mushrooms are probably a little bit higher in protein than some of these other things but I don't think this is necessarily about protein because a bag of crisps wouldn't have much protein in it either so what I'm really looking at here is the snack value of these and I think it's fair to say that these are all made out of fairly healthy vegetables so even though some of the vitamins and things may have been lost during the dehydration process there's still fiber in these and in that sense they may actually be slightly better for your digestion than a big chunk of meat anyway decision time okay so here's my subjective judgment of these meat-free jerky substitutes in last place sixth place is the carrots cut into batons I'm gonna judge the rounds separately because they were very different in texture the flavors good but yeah just a little bit tough and chewy in fifth place the butternut squash again good flavor nice sweetness but the texture was just a bit leathery in fourth place the carrots cut into rounds and I'm gonna say if you're gonna make carrot jerky rounds are definitely the way to go rather than batons quite a perceptible gap in terms of pleasure of eating between these two examples of the same thing in third place we've got the jar of peppers so again good flavor but just a little bit thin and the texture was a bit like confectionery almost in second place and it was pretty close between first and second the mushrooms really really good flavor just perhaps a little bit dry on texture and then in first place my own fire roasted red pepper just had everything in the right place really for this one it had enough sweetness it had enough texture the thickness of the flesh makes it a nice chewy but still soft texture it had a good sweetness that fire roasting I think has added a little bit of flavor and yeah it, it just all round I think that one kind of worked really well I think probably all of the top four are good enough that I think you could put those in a packet and sell that as vegan beer snacks and that would be just fine not sure about the butternut squash maybe that one needs a bit more work carrots batons just don't think it's worth cutting them that shape it makes them a bit too chewy and a bit too challenging on the teeth but you know maybe some people like that so don't worry about these bits going to waste even the carrots and the butternut squash even though they're not quite palatable enough to eat as a beer snack they won't go to waste I'm making a bean casserole today so this is the butternut squash or some of it I'm just gonna chop that up and throw that in and that will provide a bit of seasoning from the coating that's on there and it will rehydrate like a dried vegetable so you know to the extent it's possible I try to avoid waste in this house so there we go that was the end result of my first round of plant-based jerky attempts let me know in the comments if you would have done anything differently from what I've done here or perhaps if you've got some ideas for other things I should try in place of these vegetables so just really final thoughts on this fake jerky I made this a couple of days ago it's now I think day 13 of my beer advent calendar and I'm enjoying the last few little bits of the best of the jerky with a can of Ladenburger which is actually really nice this is a really nice beer it's uh, got a fruitiness to it so I consider this experiment a success but interestingly I gave a piece of this jerky to my son who visited me today and he spat it out um, so make of that what you will it could be that I only like this because I like most things or it could just be that he's a bit of a fuss pot I found this a really tasty snack 
to have with a beer or actually just as a snack. For me, it works really well, but maybe it's not for everyone. And the longer carrot pieces and the butternut squash, those won't go to waste. I will put them in soups and things like that. I wouldn't bother drying them for this purpose, but I'll make sure that I don't waste these remnants here. It's really actually good for livening up a casserole or a soup or something like that, just adding some intense flavour because obviously the, all the vegetable flavour is concentrated down and they've got all that seasoning on them. This also definitely won't go to waste because I just like this as a snack. So that was my first round of veggie jerky experiments. Let me know in the comments what you might do instead of that or in addition to that and what you think of the idea of this in general. Is it a travesty or a triumph to be making snacks out of just raw vegetables? I think we'll definitely revisit this in the future and use what we've learned in this experiment as a springboard for the kind of next iteration. But for now, thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon. Thank you.